So I'm here in the other workshop, which is normally used by Mr. Chippy, who isn't currently around, so I can sneak up and do things while he's not looking. I'm also stood right behind the Tannoy speaker as it plays its background music and monitors various things on the scanner that's connected to it. Ah, then, um, the whole reason I'm here is that we're going to carry on with the Heathkit HW12A. We've been successfully using it every evening. Um, on it, there's its power supply lurking. And I have I set up this signal generator, the Hewlett Packard one, and this set of equipment, which I've done a couple of CB demonstrations on, because that uh, Marconi uh, AF power meter 893C does Synad, and I paid 25 quid for one of those and 45 quid for another. So they are out there. They don't say they're a Synad meter, but they are. So they can be had at the right price. But it has to be the 893C, not the A, because that is indeed just an AF power meter. So back to the thing, the whole idea is that, I so said we've been using the HW12A successfully since the, we set it up as the manual said. But of course, Heath kits are, uh, we're, we're, also, we're, we're kind of um, there to help people who didn't have bucket loads of test equipment and didn't do this as, uh, for a living. And so they had probably a, a simpler way of setting up, like against another receiver or something like that. But because we've got the test equipment, I think we can do better than what the manual says. Uh, but before we do that fine alignment and see exactly where we are, because we know that this radio is doing different power at the bottom end of the band to the upper end of the band on transmit. So that's one thing we can address. And I just want to make sure that receiver is absolutely, as per manual, and the absolute best it can be. And that's why we've got the HP um, generator out and why we've got the Marconi AF power meter there. Uh, we'll probably tune it up on mod rather than um, um, on Synad on this occasion. But before we do that, I want to test the valves. Any Americans watching that's tubes? I'm going to test the valves in this product because if one's low emission, it needs to be changed at this point before we do the alignment. So we, what I've done is set up on Mr. Chippy's bench itself, rather than the sub bench here, the valve testing equipment. And I, we have two, we actually have three valve testers here, but the AVO um, one doesn't work at the moment, needs some rebuild work. Um, we use a, a rather basic uh, 19, late 1960s, early 70s, I think it's a Sencor one, which I imported from the States, and that does some of the newer valves. But what we're going to use today is the I-177, which is World War II vintage. So we'll just pause this video and go over to the next bench and away a bit from the Tannoy speaker. And a Tannoy system has neatly gone over to radio like it can do on the hour. I always manage to pick that time to do a video. And we're also trying not to switch the air conditioner on in here. In fact, I've taken a leaf out of Radio Cruncher's book and I've bought shorts on today. Um, so hopefully you won't see any leg. So we've got the 115 volt step down transformer, we've got the I-177 and I think it's the MX494 expansion box. Um, and about 18 years ago, somebody on eBay was offering the printed manual um, reproduction for this product and I'm very glad to have that so one of the first things it says I'll just bring the camera closer so the first thing it uh, cheerily says is Washington 1944 War Department and normally you know it, you, when you buy an expensive product it says congratulations oh, start again when you buy an expensive product it would normally say congratulations on buying the XYZ123 super wonderful valve tester but no it doesn't say that here because it starts with how to destroy it. When ordered by your commissioner, smash using sledges, axes, hand axes, pickaxes, hammers, crowbars, heavy little tools, cut using axes, machetes, burn using gasoline, kerosene and oil, explosives use firearms and grenades and tear, and dispose by burying all in, in slit trenches, foxholes and throwing the stream and scatter. Well, we're looking after this because it was a lot of money. So what we're going to do is we'll open those lids and what we have here 
I've shown this before, I'm absolutely sure I've shown this one before, is the I-177 valve tester. Being American, it's a tube. And then we have the expansion box, which we've not bought, we've not used this yet. Um, that's cost a small fortune, but it's we needed it. You know, this has to happen sometimes. I, I remember when I was 14, they'd got these at an army surplus place. I don't know what condition they were in, but those expansion boxes, were well, one pound plus VAT, and the VAT at that time was 12.5%. So I could have had one for one pound 12 and a half pence. And I think by the time that was imported with the duty and that from the States, I don't think there's any change out of 350 quid. But there you go. Sometimes you have to do these things. So um, what we now need to do is to, this does, this does Octal and B7G and all the plethora of other things. And of course the expansion box does B9A and some of the newer valves. And the that just plugs into one of the octal bases as it commands you to do in that wonderful tube tester manual. So what we're going to do, I'm not going to show you me testing every one of these tubes. Valves, I'm getting into it myself. Um, and it does have, it does have um, those television tubes in the... Um, those television sweep type uh, tubes which are called compact trans. Now we had never had compact trans in the UK. Uh, I mean I was in the television business for donkey's years and we didn't do that. So I may not be able to test those and we may just decide to order new ones just for the hell of it shall we say. So I'm going to pull the first valve out of there and let's see what it is. So what we'll do, we'll do these in a sensible order and we'll start with valve one and we'll work through um, so it's 6G5 which are the compactrons and I'm not sure that we can test those so I say I've not used this before so it's an absolute new learning curve for me I've used the Y177 for donkey's years um, I did I bought this one um, I bought this one about 10 years ago uh, off eBay and again it was a small fortune and um, my original one I lent to somebody and never got it back and I did ask for it oh no no I'm not seeing that and you know I'm not saying he, he stole it or anything but um, anyway I ended up buying another one so we better start I so said we'll start with valve one we're doing a methodical order and we'll start by plugging in to our power supply So we now have 115 volts present and we'll switch on the beast which actually has valves in it. It always made me laugh that you have a valve tester with, with valves in it. The first thing you do with one of these is you do a line test and you set the, the line. So if I press line test now I'll move that slightly across. There is a just before the green good, just after the question mark and before the green good, is the line test. So I press line test and look at that, it's actually spot on, but I can vary that. It feels like a rear stat, it's certainly wire a wire one. So we've got that spot on with that step down auto transformer that we're using. So that's our first thing. So I'm gonna pull the uh, valve one out of the uh, radio. And it is a 6EA8 by the looks of that. Oh, well, this is a good start, isn't it? We've had to do the other valve tester out. And this time we've got the um, EIKO, um, e I don't know how it's pronounced, uh, 636, which this valve has an equivalent of 6 KD8 according to my information and this tube tester valve tester does it so we'll pop that in the appropriate um, I'll just make sure the switches are all off and it is socket 15 sorry it's, it's the only socket it fits in So 
So we want filament volts to D. That's right. Now there's two sections to the valve, so we need low to 15 and 1 and 9 in. Well, that does a whole pile of nothing, doesn't it? And two, three, and six is the alternative. Two, three, six. Well, something's not right there. So now I've discovered that I've put the uh, heater selector switch in the wrong position. We'll try again. So the first one is pin is connection one and nine. One and nine. And we have borderline. The next one is two, three, and six. Two, three, six. And we have borderline. Just make actually, I've just made sure the uh, load is is just now over borderline. Yeah, that's that'll do. That'll do. Switch those off. And let's see which one's next. Okay, so we move on to valve two, and it's another six EA eight. So we'll test it as a six KD eight, and once again, it's one and nine for the first test and it's still warming up but that's fine and it's two three and six for the second test yep that'll do so next one we come to we can use the um, i177 valve tester in the supplementary book we have socket one, sorry, no, 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 socket K, so I won't put it in to have set the other switches up, so it's A to one, it'd be easy to use this steel rule so I don't use lose my play. Six AU six nine six point three volts sixty two sixteen socket K. And then when that's warmed up, it'll be the AMPL bot button. There's quite a few of these valves in that. I hadn't realised. I mean, valve stuff. I mean, it was television sets, weren't they? They're all different valves. But um, with this, there's a lot of valves the same. So I think we'll change the order I'm doing it. So AMPL. And that says very good, doesn't it? All right, we'll move on to another one. So next one, socket K, we're all set up. And 
when that warms up it'll be AMPL you can see it's coming up don't need to go any further that's fine what I've done now is to photocopy the service information and we'll just cross these off when they've been tested so I've now put in valve 11 I think it is let's see whether that comes up yeah that's fantastic right we'll move on to the next one so that's valve 9 just gone in that's fine too so next one I've got the this set up as the supplement says which I've printed out when I press the test it's not happy at all so we'll turn that off and we'll go back to the simplistic tester okay let's see if it's happier in this tester so we're in B12 BY7 so we are on D six one five and six one five and six helps if we switch the power supply on and the load to fifteen as it was before. Hopefully that'll come up because the radio was working. Oh no, it's two and eight. I'm just trying to blow the thing up. So that seems right. So we'll move on to the next one. So we'll test the next one as a 6GH8 because that's what the equivalent is if it was 6 volt. Uh, and I presume we're testing the heaters individually this way. So section 1 is reading fine. And the, the second section is 2, 3 and 6. 2, 3 and 6. And that's reading fine as well. So that's another one crossed off. So next we'll go for the 6B E6, I think it says. And get the adapter out. So just check with the radio. 6BE6. Looks like a double diode. So if we bring that rule back. There it is. So 6BE6. Eight five six point three eight five six point three fifty two and nine fifty two and nine socket K Now that reads quite low on there, but it also says diodes okay. So that's well within the diodes okay section. So the other leg of that uh, valve, other section, is 
55 and 23. Now, to be honest, that is lower than. So I'm just checking. I'm, I'm right. Seven, nine, six point three, fifty-five, and twenty-three. That does seem low. I think we need to get a replacement one of those. So see if there's any more of those while we're set up. And that just leaves another six E A eight, I think it is. Okay, so six B eight. Six E B eight, if I can get it right, six E B eight. So it's D four two to three the load is twenty two the load to twenty two two and three good emission and then with the load at eighteen it's seven to eight for the other section interesting Go back to the other test, two to three. I wonder if we've got a dirty connection here. A, B, C, D. So we're reading okay on the first section again. So let's try seven and eight again. So change the load. Ah, that's fine this time. I know we cleaned these switches some years ago when we bought it, so that's fine. Well, surprise, surprise, it does do the PA valves, which of course are television, what you'd call sweep tubes, what we would call line output valves in, in British. So they are 6GE5 and 6GE5, we'll just set it up for that. So filament volts is D, 1, I'll switch on that can be warming up, and the load is 15, which is about where we were, and it's 3, 7, 10, 11, 3, 7, 10, 11. Now these you'd think to be the most thrashed. So we've got on the on the border there, aren't we? You know, it's uh, we know the radio is doing um, fifty to eighty watts, depending where on the band. So it might be sensible to change both of these. I've just swapped over now for the other valve and it's exactly the same so I'll leave the tester set up and hopefully it will start reading emission as it warms up. Yeah, it's about the same as the other, it's on the question mark line. So we'll get that um, little double diode ordered and we'll get a couple of those ordered. And there we have it, that is testing the valves in the HW12A. And although it works fine, 
there are those three valves that are borderline. So when we get those, we'll go through the alignment and uh, that will finish off that job. Thank you for watching.